Good, you're back. I'm Neom, and today's episode is about the Uncanny Valley. Please bestir yourself to mobilize your index finger if you're on a mobile device, your thumb if you're using a TV remote, or your wrist if you're using a mouse, to select the thumbs up button, which indicates to me that you have liked the video, and indicates to YouTube that my videos are not a steaming assemblage of detritus. In other words, leave a like. The word of the day is detritus. Detritus refers to any form of waste, debris, or undetermined garbage. But enough about that. Let's get into it. All of us know the experience. It's 2 a.m., all the lights are off, and you've just dominated a late-night bowl of Wheaties when you're walking upstairs to your room. Then, a slight raising of the neck hair, maybe a goosebump or two, and perhaps you find yourself walking a little faster. But a strange phenomenon occurs. The faster you walk, the more urgent your state of mind, the more goosebumps arise in your arms, and the more uncertain becomes your countenance, thus calling into being a snowball effect of acceleration until finally you Apollo 13 into your room, slamming the door so hard a picture falls off someone's wall down the street. You know nothing was chasing you. It was completely illogical. But for some reason, your light on, shades drawn, and mystery gone, you feel safe. Now let me take you to another scenario, quite different. You're outside, walking along the street just dropped a letter off at the post office. There's a strong wind, and dry leaves blow in circles in a gray sky. What light there is is unusually orange for this time of day. The weather is almost pleasant, a very cinematic setting in which you, clearly the main character, feel comforted. But then you hear it. Low, whining alarms start calling from every street corner. You look behind you, and there, only a mile away, is a record-breaking tornado heading straight towards you. In this scenario, you know exactly what the danger is, and exactly how bad the results could be. Most of us are fortunate enough to never be in situations as horrific as this, but those who survived them will never forget them. These are two very different types of fear, one illogical and one very logical, one faintly ridiculous and childish, and one a living nightmare. Somewhere between these opposite ends of the fear spectrum lies the third scenario, the uncanny valley. You're at the fair, when you pass a small storefront with a sign outside, Wax figures, it says. You walk inside and take a look around. But the moment you see one of these lifelike figures, a chill runs up your spine. Maybe they've just got the AC blasting so the figures don't collapse. Or maybe it's the cold, empty stare of the waxen eyes peering at you from beyond the perimeter of the living, as if to say, one day, maybe 50 years from now, or maybe tomorrow, you will be dead. But I will go on existing in this halfway point. I will outlast you by a thousand years. Unless, of course, they melt me down to make a life-size Andrew Garfield for a Spider-Man convention. Take a chart wherein the human appearance becomes more apparent as you travel along the x-axis. You start here, at 0, zero with let's say, a Boston Dynamics robot. This is clearly not a human, only the basic shape is vaguely humanoid. Then up here, you end with a healthy person, let's say, Steve Buscemi. Actually, let's say, John Hamm. He looks very human and very healthy. Now, the y-axis represents affinity, or more plainly, likability. As you travel from point A to point B, your affinity towards different levels of humanness increases at a steady rate, right? Wrong. Well, does it increase at an accelerated rate or a decelerated rate, creating a curve? Mmm, try two curves. Starting down here, things progress about as you would expect. From Boston Mechanics to Cartoon Human to Ape, but then, all of a sudden, there's this drastic dip right about the time you hit Polar Express or Cocoa Melon. Then at its lowest point reaches things like Cubo Girl, the animated head of a girl whose sight follows your mouse cursor. From there, things start getting better again. Disney's Rapunzel, an unhealthy person, and then finally, John Hamm. This is the uncanny valley, that strange point where the familiar is unfamiliar, where the human is inhuman, and where the known gives you the creeps. It's the same reason why too much plastic surgery or makeup looks bad. A little bit might make you look younger, healthier, further from your expiration date. But take it too far, and it starts looking less real, and you start sliding all the way back down into the valley until you end up like Tyra Banks or Jocelyn Wildenstein. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe for more content, ring the bell to be notified about new videos, and comment what you want to learn about next. I'm Neon, and I'll see you next time.